Hello guys, welcome back to another Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer build guide and today we're taking a look at the Angara Insurgent. The Insurgent is an expert at controlling an area by utilising his assault turret and trip mines as well as offering fantastic localised support through his shield boost ability. Of course, it all varies a little bit depending on how you choose to build the character and my personal build focuses more on a bunkered sniper style of gameplay with an emphasis on weapon damage and shield strength and regeneration. So real quick, just for the impatient, a brief glance at the abilities chosen. Shield boost, trip mine, assault turret, offensive tech, and bioelectric defense. Okay, what we're gonna do now, because however many points you have to spend is going to depend on the rank of your class, I'm going to list my recommended path to pick up each trait in order of priority. As usual, we're mostly going to prioritize offense over defense due to the fact that whilst leveling, you'll be working your way through bronze difficulty up to gold and defense is more important later, therefore you can pick it up later. So to start things off, I highly recommend going into Assault Turret first and we're going to go all the way to the end, all six ranks. Important things to note here are, our Assault Turret is going to serve three main functions for us. It's going to serve as a personal tank, and on occasion will aggro enemy fire for you, allowing you to freely pick off the targets attacking it or escape if you're in trouble. It will also serve as a target assistant who will let you know which enemies are in direct line of sight due to the fact that it will be attacking that target and if it can direct line of sight that target then you can as well. And most importantly it will serve as a crowd control. For most enemies that it hits due to the cryo rounds trait that will be taken at rank 6 which we will get into. So the first choice you're going to want to make in this tree is for durability. We take this over recharge speed simply because there is much more benefit in the turret staying alive rather than there is in a slight reduction in downtime after it's already destroyed. As stated before, the turret is able to act as a magnet for enemies that manage to flank or sneak up on you, giving you precious time to either deal with them before your turret dies or giving you time to retreat to a new location. Either way, you want your turret to be as tanky as possible. Next, we're going to take Omnilink. This will allow the turret to repair itself when you're near it, and as a bunker sniper, you should always be within close proximity to the turret to be utilizing it to its full effect, as stated in the three main functions that it serves. We do not take damage because as stated, its main functions all revolve around utility. The damage the turret does is weak to begin with. You would be sacrificing utility, which is the main function of the ability, for an increase on something that has already least in priority. So I suggest taking Omnilink. Finally, we are taking Cryo Ammo. This is a no-brainer, it can CC enemies from across the map, making landing headshots with a sniper easy for even the worst of aimers and manages to slow down the enemy enough to give you breathing room in many situations. Compared to Flamethrower which does a decent bit of damage but only to enemies obviously within a close proximity and as a sniper, that's only going to apply to a few flankers that decide to say hello to you in a round. So Cryo Ammo without question. Next we want to start getting some damage into our weapon itself, so we're going to want to start advancing into the offensive tech tree, just up to rank 2 so we can get an 8% increase to weapon damage. You can grab the increased power damage, but I advise saving that for later if you really want to utilize as much as possible early on. Uh, remember it all comes down to how many points you have available to you, so if unless you have like a rank 10 of the class, you're not going to have as many points as someone else, so always prioritize what you can early on. So for now, I'd suggest picking up a few ranks in proximity mine, just so it actually feels of some use to you. So for now, I'd grab some extra power cells and increase the force and damage of it. From here, to be honest, I suggest going into the shield boost tree and maxing it out to six ranks. I advise this because we've already picked up enough points in our main offensive utility. Um, we can max it out later, sure, but in the interest of those who don't have as many points as me to spend, you're going to need to start moving into the defense now, otherwise you're going to be locked out. In this tree, I recommend taking Restoration, Shield Burst and Overcharge. This is because they synergize with each other to create a strong defensive panic button. The increased radius is nice but works mostly for an on the ground support player and as a bunkered sniper, we more often than not find ourselves alone on the other side of a map providing cover fire for our squad mates and so it will benefit you more to focus on personal buffs more so than group buffs with this playstyle. Restoration and Shield Burst are going to provide you with a massive boost to how much shield you're getting and how fast you're getting them, but the real trick is coming from this trait here, Overcharge. With this trait, when you pop Shield Boost, you and anyone in range is going to have 100% increased shields for 3 seconds. That makes you very tanky for those 2 seconds, which basically means you have one of the strongest defensive utilities outside of, say, Stealth at your disposal. 
which makes an ideal cooldown for resin teammates, grabbing objectives when under fire, etc. <laughs> oh my corpse. <laughs> but what I think is the coolest and most noticeable benefit of this ability is at the extraction point with like 5 seconds to go. Everyone hiding behind cover taking damage, pop this ability and everyone immediately gets all of their shields restored and boosted by 100% making it highly unlikely anyone is going to go down before the timer reaches zero. So it completely removes the stress of extraction on gold with, you know, half the map crawling all over your position trying to obliterate you and your squad mates and you crossing your fingers that nobody goes down at the last second. So take overcharge. The priority order of what you take next is entirely up to you if you have the points. I would personally recommend boosting your shields further by going five ranks into bioelectric defense. And this fifth rank is actually going to boost your assault turrets health by 30% as well. So um, this trait here is entirely up to you. But basically, if you're a run and gun player, you'll want evasion. If you're more of a bunkered sniper like me, you'll see a bigger benefit from the regeneration. You can then pick up rank 3 in offensive tech. That will boost your power damage a bit more. But honestly, I do this last as you'll get more benefit from just maximizing your trip mine as much as you can. You'll see I've gone for more power cells more damage and force and finally EMP. EMP is far more useful as it works across the board and serves as an extra CC which is always useful. For my gear then I'm using a rank 10 Vanquisher with a rank 10 Talon. I always use the Talon as my secondary when using a long range main weapon. Um, this is because the Talon is basically a pistol shotgun that will decimate anything that you can land a headshot on within one or two shots. For my equipment I'm just using a juggernaut shield because it's all that I've got available right now. Um, it's mostly just for the 10% shield increase and melee damage when I have to finish off a target that's right up in my face but generally not as much benefit from this as you would have on classes like say the Avenger which this is an absolute must for so if you don't have this on this class don't worry about it. Playstyle tips then. First thing I like to do on a general survivor round is find a good vantage point, set up your turret in a spot where it has line of sight for all enemy pathways, then set up a couple of trip mines in an area that you want to serve as your back door and let them take care of whatever decides to sneak up on you. Between you and your turret you should be able to notice flanking enemies pretty quickly and the explosion from your trip mine should give away anything advancing from behind. You shouldn't need to move at all for the early rounds, moving between rounds just to collect ammo and stuff. Uh, later on when objectives start coming into play and enemies start turning the heat up, you'll obviously have to be a bit more mobile. This is where you'll have to rely on correct use of your shield boost and trip mines. Here you can start using your trip mines aggressively. I suggest saving them for the larger armor targets like destroyers, hydras, etc. Whilst you won't be able to kill a destroyer outright with your mines, a trip mine can take out their turrets. Um, they also do enough damage to be able to finish them off pretty easily when they are low. So don't hesitate to use them on the tougher enemies. Regarding your shield boost, don't just pop it when your shields go down. If possible, try to utilize cover and regenerate your shields naturally. Remember your shield boost is spec to give you a short period of high durability, which means you can utilize it from, you know, running directly through enemy fire, either to reposition, aggro enemies away from the point or squad mates, help an injured squad mate, um, or advance on an objective. Always use it on the extraction point with less than five seconds to go. If possible, try to hit all of your squad mates within its radius. The rest really just comes down to how good of a sniper you are and making sure you kill things as soon as they lock onto you with your turret. For this class to be effective and efficient, you really need to make sure that the vast majority of your shots are landing on weak points. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll probably have the next one out within the next few days. Um, but not sure which class it will be yet. If you want me to prioritize any particular class, feel free to suggest it in the comments. And uh, if you like the video, uh, give it a like because it helps me out. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more Mass Effect Andromeda content coming soon. Okay, guys, until next time, take care. Get to the chopper! Ow, ow, ow! Nice. Why partial? I don't know.
Baldrak, how are you do this? Fuck! 